Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back again with another video for Honey Bee Stamps. Today we are going to be using just one stamp and its coordinating die. This is the Daisy Layers Bouquet Stamp and Die Set. Um, I've used this in the past, but only for like some no line coloring. Today we are going to use it a little bit differently. So I'm working on Canson Montevall watercolor paper and I am stamping this down in our intense black ink. I'm going to stamp it two times two or three times um, because it's the first time I'm stamping it with black ink and stamping on watercolor paper because it's textured is like meh. Sometimes you got to stamp more than once to get a good impression. So then once that is done, then I am going to heat set it and then we're going to jump right into the technique. So you may have noticed from the title, what is spill art? What is spill art? So spill art is... <laughs> It actually started, I think, on like Instagram or TikTok or something as coffee spill art. So people would spill coffee onto their projects, sometimes before they sketched, sometimes after, and then they would like splat it, like splash it, like smack it. I don't even know. You're going to see me do it here. So I didn't want to use coffee. I'm using a reinker. This is Salty Ocean. I did try milled lavender before, and I'm a blue girl. Like, that's just what I am. So basically, I just added a little bit of water, and then you're going to see my hesitation here. I'm like, what am I even doing? So I just so I just started smacking away and it was splashing all over my card. And then that was that. That's how you do it. <laughs> That's how you do it. Um, it was really fun, actually. Uh, it doesn't take very long to make a piece. I think that you could do these like rainbow and just leave them as is, as maybe like thank you cards or like a gift set. I think that would be really fun. Um, in this first one, I blotted up all of the water so that it was like a really soft background in this well i'm going to dry it down because i'm going to cope a color over it but then i'm going to do another one and with the second one after i um so i just did one drop of reinker a little bit of water if that's what you're seeing and then so this one a little less hesitation for the smacking splashing um but i let it sit just a little bit longer and then when i put my um uh, paper towel on there to blot it up. I didn't blot up all of the water right away. I left a little bit there. So this one was actually a little bit darker. So you could kind of play around with it. I also wanted some more like splashes down here in the bottom left. And so I was kind of playing with that to see if I could get it to move a little bit more. And then I'm going to do this, the same thing. I'm going to blot it up. This one did have, like I said, a little bit more water left on it. And then uh, I dried that down as well. So here's what they both look like. I think they're a super fun background. I would probably do them a bit darker if I was going to leave them, but I'm not going to leave them. So there's, again, because everybody has different variations of like um, techniques. There were some people who outlined all of the splash, if you will, uh, all of the spill. There were some people who only outlined a large portion of it and didn't outline all the little splashes. Um, I outlined all of the little splashes and everything. But here's the thing. When you're doing the outline of the splash, you want to go right over the image. So if there's a, like the splash is in the middle of a leaf, you're just going to go right through that leaf and just follow the splash line. This part was oddly therapeutic, like, because you could just, I could just let my mind wander while I kind of like doodled around these kind of abstract puddles. Um, so I kind of enjoyed this part quite a bit. For the second one, I am not going to outline it. I'm just going to leave the splash in the background unoutlined. Um, they give two different looks. I think this one with the outline is much more impactful for the like spill art technique. Um, but I understand that some people are not going to want to take the time to outline it or they're not going to have the dexterity to do it. And so I kind of wanted to show it both ways. The second way without the outline is a bit softer. You can see that on the left. Um, and then we're going to go in and color them. 
So originally, when I was going to color them, I was going to do them like rainbow, like each individual petal's rainbow. And when I tried that on my practice piece, I didn't really love it. Um, and then my crafty friend Dawn was like, oh, I thought you were going to do rainbow like you know, one flower, a different color. So that is what I ended up doing, but I ended up kind of melding them in the middle um, so that they blended together. So not one flower was just any one color. They're all kind of different colors. But here's the thing. Here's the trick of it. You only want to color where the spill is. So you will leave anything that doesn't have that spill or splash on it white. And so like here in this flower, the center has no splash on it. So it's white. <laughs> this can get a little bit tricky um, to see like what should be colored. But I think that the ultimate effect of it is really, really cool. Um, it's definitely a more abstract kind of art. It's not going to be for everybody. Uh, and that's okay. Not every technique is, you know, is for everyone. But I really had a lot of fun with this. Um, it just something different to kind of, you know, break up the same old, same old kind of coloring. And every background is different. So you really never know what you're going to get. Um, I just thought it was really fun. So I'll be interested to see what you guys have to say. If you like the softer version or if you like the outlined version um, or if you like it at all, quite honestly, because for some people it's not going to be for them and that's okay. So when I'm blending my colors, I am um, looking at the last, because I'm using Copic markers, I am looking at the last number. So for like the Bs, I used a B02046 um, for my uh, violets, I used a V010406. For my red violets or my pinks, I used a 020406. So I know all of those are going to blend really nicely together because they're all ending in that like 1-2 range, 3-4 uh, range, or a 5-6 range. I didn't go any darker than that except for the centers of the flowers, and those weren't blended with anything else just, you know, just amongst themselves. So I didn't have to worry about the color families blending. Um, but yeah, it was, it was fun. And I like the little rainbow look. I will say I did run into a little bit of a problem when it came to the edges. Uh, and of course I left that in because I think it's super important to show not only the mistakes that we make as, um, you know, quote unquote professional crafters, but I think it's also important to show you how I fixed it. So that way, if you have the same issue or a similar issue, you know, maybe that might help you out in the future. I did on my practice piece, I also stamped it in a no-line. Um, Honeybee has a no-line coloring ink. And so I stamped it in that as well. I liked the black outline a lot better. Um, but, you know, to each their own. Like I said, there's a whole bunch. Of, if you like went onto YouTube and typed in spill art or coffee spill art, you would get a ton. Um, and some of them are like portraits and they're really stunning. Um, but, you know, we find inspiration from everything and and for me, like seeing other people do art or the other takes um, on art just in different areas other than card making or, you know, stamping and paper craft. Um, I love being able to incorporate that kind of back into what I do in maybe a slightly different way. So here, I obviously didn't do a sketch. I used a stamp. And because this was the first time I was doing it, I chose to use a stamp that was already put together. Consequently, the you know, it's a daisy bouquet. Somebody else has already built this. Another one that would be really good for this would be the Beautiful Blooms from Honeybee. That's a large um, image. Any of the, like there's a dahlia, there's a sunflower, you could use those as well, um, you know, to just stamp them down uh, and have a large enough piece that it would cover your background. But because I wasn't really sure how the tech, like the first time I tried it, I tried it with a spoon and I was like, this is not splashing. And then I was like, I should just use my hand. <laughs> I should just use my hand. And that did work a lot, lot better, <laughs> a lot better. Um, so just, just kind of very fun. Um, 
really happy with the way that they came out. And I think that a little rainbow bouquet, you know, sent to somebody um, just for no reason at all or for a thank you or for a celebration would be fun and appreciated. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's that. That's what we're doing today. I did leave in the coloring for the second one, even though it's pretty much exactly the same. I just sped it up um, so that you could see that second one because there is no black outline is a lot more forgiving when it comes to where the color should be. Uh, because you'll see when it comes just in here in a, in a minute or two when I make my little boo-boo, um, you'll know what I'm talking about when I say that it's much more forgiving because then if you want to extend out like the splash, nobody's really going to notice, you know, because it's covered up by color. Whereas in this one, because everything is outlined in black, it's pretty obvious when you color in the wrong spot, which I 100% did totally colored in the wrong spot. So the area, like I said, that I had the issue with was the leaves because there's a lot more splashes on the edges than there is in the center. And, um, you know, you don't want to skip the little areas that have, like, for example, this leaf over here kind of to the left, there's a little splash like right on the tip of it that little splash would still be colored in green. So you just kind of have to look for those little detailed portions uh, for the whole piece to make sense. Same thing with like the smaller berries in here. Um, they're on the outskirts, so there's very little splash on them, but you have to pay attention to where it kind of goes. So here is where I made my boo-boo, and you're going to see it. I'm coloring on the white area instead of on the blue area. And of course, because, you know, I've said this recently, like I'm much more confident in my Copa coloring, so I've been starting with my darkest color. And this reminds me why I always started with my lightest <laughs> color. And that's because it was easier to cover up if I made a mistake. But nonetheless, I went in, and if I had one gone in and done mapping, which we've talked about in the past, where you just kind of lay down your base color. This also would not have happened to me, but I didn't do either of those. And consequently, I made the mistake where I was coloring in the wrong area. So I went ahead and I colored in the correct areas. And now I'm going to go in with a zero, a colorless blender, and I'm going to start pushing that color back as much as I can. So I'm going to push it back to where it should be green, where the splash is. And you want to let this kind of dry in between layers because it, you know, saturates into the, uh, paper and then it's you're you're not really moving it anymore so give it a little break I went and colored in some of the other greens um and then you know came back to it once it was completely dry and then how I fixed it was this is me waiting for it to be completely dry going in and doing the little berries which I just chose the darkest blue for I felt like because my splash was blue that would make the most sense um but then I'm going to go in and how I fixed it is the handy dandy white gel pen. And I use a number 10. This is a, a number 10 from Jelly Roll. And I just went in there and I colored the areas white that should have been white. Because even though I use the colorless blender, it's not 100%. There still is some, like a tinge of some green left. Um, and so I wanted it to truly be white to match the rest of the piece. I don't think it's particularly noticeable in the final piece. Um, maybe the recipient might notice that it's you know, slight, a, a slightly different color. But other than that, I don't really think it's super noticeable unless you've watched the video. Um, so now here, this is the second one. This is the one we're not outlining the splash. We're just, we're still sticking to just coloring the splash areas. But as I said before, a lot more forgiving um, if you make a mistake because there is no black line that delineates where you should stop coloring. It's just you color, like seeing where the splash is and then coloring over that. And then we will speed this up um, because like I said, it's pretty much the same technique that we did the last time. So um, story time. Do we have time for story? I think we do. I think we have time for a little bit of story time. Um, what's been happening lately? I don't I don't really know. I had all these stories like backlogged because we had um, like we just had some videos where there were other things that we were talking about, like Tina's auction and things like that. Um, and so I had like tons of 
backlogged stories and now I cannot recall a single one of them. Uh, so let's talk about what I did today. I chatted with um, Dawn. We both worked. We have found that we like being co <laughs> we like being coworkers, and so we craft um, on like FaceTime or uh, it's Messenger for us. Um, but then that way we can give each other kind of input. And you know, there are sometimes where it's just dead silence because we're both super working. Like when I was outlining um, the spray, she was sewing and nobody was talking. Like we were just enjoying each other's presence uh, because everybody was just trying to like get work done. Um, so we did that. And then my wonderful mama came over. And um, like I told you guys before, she is kind of sorting through my stamps and getting rid of anything that needs to be retired. I do have a little pile over here of things that I need to go through because either she couldn't find it or it doesn't have a name on it. So she doesn't know what it's called or what companies it's from. And then, um, so once I do that, that's the last step because she's already done all the rest of them. Um, her and my sister, actually, my middle sister totally helped out a ton with that. Um, then I will, she's like, you got two weeks. That's what she told me. <laughs> she's like, you have two weeks to get through these and then I'm coming back over here and then we are packing the boxes, um, which is mystery boxes. And so I will definitely be announcing that once, uh, we will have those to be, um, distributed and purchased, uh, because I have got to get this stuff out of my house, y'all. I do. I don't have any more room and stuff just keeps coming in, which I am endlessly grateful for, but I don't have, I mean, I just have this one room office and I just think to myself, like people who don't even have a designated craft area, like no wonder they have to like bin, like purge all of their stuff or make sure they have enough bins for it. Um, because it's so challenging just to keep it organized. Um, and I know people do, you know, I organize mine by company. I don't organize them by theme or, um, you know, like, uh, what the sentiments are, or, I mean, I, mine's all like the bins are by company, but I think that's because I work for so many companies and like there are certain companies like Honeybee, for example, that I've been with them for so long. Like we've worked together, is it six, is it six years? I think it's six, seven, six. I can't remember. It's been a lot of years. And so because of that, um, I literally have everything that they have ever like put out. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say everything. That's not entirely true, but I got a lot of it. And, um, so because of that, like I, as things retired, should I have gone through and gotten rid of it? Absolutely. Did I have time to do that? Absolutely not. Um, so we did get rid of, um, you know, some of those kind of older things or companies that I don't work for anymore, but I still had stuff from um, stuff that I, there were some of them, honestly, I was even kind of like upset about <laughs> because I was like, I never even got to use that stamp set. What a bummer. Um, just because it, that sometimes it just, it just works out like that. So here's our two pieces next to each other. I am going to go in with my white gel pen and just add some dots into the center of the daisies. And then I did trim these down. These pieces originally were four and a half by six because that's what I cut my watercolor panels to. Um, I did end up trimming them down to four and an eighth by five and well... I don't know. It's not five and a half. It's an eighth of an inch smaller than that, but I don't know what that measurement is. I can't do the math things, guys. Somebody, some math teacher helped me out. Anyway, I trimmed them so that they eat. So each side has an eighth of an inch border. Um, and then I added some shimmer just to the flowers. I could have done the leaves too, but I added it just to the flowers. And now I'm going to heat emboss my, heat emboss my sentiments. They are from the same set. One says you are simply the best. And the other one says you make my day brighter. I thought that they were pretty fitting for these kind of bright colors um, heat emboss those in white on black using our brilliant white pigment ink and some detail embossing powder. And then, um, it's time to build these, these babies. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and adhere them down flat. Uh, I certainly could pop them up, but I really don't think that they need any more help. I think they have enough going on in, in the background that it's perfectly okay if they're a flat card. So I'm going to adhere that down. This one's going to end up being a landscape card, and the other one is going to end up being a um, portrait or a, a vertical card. After I looked at them, um, like once I got them adhered down to the panel, I decided that I did want to cut just a few more of the sentiment um, to stack them up so that they would have a little bit more weight. And so I cut two more of each out of white cardstock and then just adhered them together. And then we're going to accent with some, some gem stickers. So yeah, so my mom came over, uh, we went through those, and then um, I had groceries, I got those put away in the refrigerator cleaned out, and then it was time to go get Miss Katie Caitlin. Um, so I went and picked her up, came home, uh, my wonderful mama came back over to visit, because uh, she's like, well, if I don't see her now, then I'm not going to get to see her this week. Um and Peanut was, I, I, unfortunately, he was sick uh, last night in the middle of the night. It doesn't see, it seems like it was something he ate. Um, so he did not go to school today. Uh, but so hopefully I will get to see him tomorrow. Uh, so these are the gem stickers that I am using. I am using a blue from the Rainbow Birthday. And then I am using the pink from, no. That's a lie. Reverse. I am using the blue from the Simply Spring and the pink um, from the Rainbow Birthday. Gem stickers. Fantastic. Uh, and you could go with any of these colors or a neutral would also, you know, be fine for these. But then that's it. That's both cards. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that you're intrigued by this and we'll maybe give it a try because it really was a lot of fun just to do something different. Thank you guys so much for your time. I always appreciate that and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.